assistance for the equip equip three sub component one point three. BVM has very well established center of excellence in foundation engineering, IoT infrastructure, RF and antenna design, communication and professional skills, uh, and many more in progress like industry 4.0, cyber security, big data, and high speed uh, computing. All this would never have been possible without the constant support and motivation of its parent institution, Charutar Vidya Mandal. Charutar Vidya Mandal was established in year 1945. It is one of India's leading NGO, not of able charity trust. It was established with the prime objective of a rural development to education to bring about the social awakening, social uplifting, and enrichment. We have among us Institute of the Rinjit Patel, who has over three decades of academic and professional experience in the field of civil, structural engineering, and concrete technology. Sir has proved his management to experience in various along with constantly being a source of inspiration for others. I would invite Professor Indrajit Patel to deliver the welcome speech. Sir, please. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Gujarat Technological University, Professor Dr. Navin Seth, sir, Chief Guest of Press Function, NGRC Bikubai Patel, Honorable Chairman Charudha Vidyamandal, and Chairman Board of Governors, Mila Vishwakarma Mahavidyalai, esteemed speaker of today's symposium, Professor Dr. Constantine from Yale Federal University, Vival Harsha from Department of Internal Education, Yale Federal University, Dr. Pawar and Dr. Brambat, convener of this symposium, Dr. Kaushika and Professor Chintan, the coordinator of this particular symposium, head of the departments, academic leaders, and distinguished participants. I, on behalf of Dilla Vishwakarma Parivar, heartily welcome you all to this one day symposium on very recent topic Application and Theory of Didactic, a 21st century teaching learning methodology. Dilla Vishwakarma Mahavadyalai, since establishment, believe in the holistic development of the students, of the faculties, and of the district institutions at large. Charutha Vidya Mandal, GTU, State government and federal government always come to us to support each of our endeavor, whether it is the campus development, whether it is teaching learning, or any R&D activities at our campus. We have maintained our campus with a state of art facility in terms of the equipments, computers, computing softwares, and create a conducive environment so that the students, the faculties, and researchers can grow in their each endeavors. Always, we have participated ourselves in each and every activities that are conducted by Gujarat Technology University in terms of the cultural festivals, technical festivals, outreach activities like NSS and CSB. And we have been always on a very frontier in all our endeavors so far as academic excellence is concerned. The modern philosophy of education is triple I, industry, issue, attraction. But we have changed our philosophy to address our vision to produce globally employable, innovative engineers by way of a new terminology, institute, industry, and internationalization. Because the innovation always comes from the industry affections. We have signed MOU with more than 80 premier industries across the globe for one to one delivery with our faculties, our departments, as well as we have signed MOU with 12 premier industrial universities from the foreign countries so that we can gain the best practices from the foreign universities. We always believe that the input from the society, from the industries and foreign universities are of great relevance to address the Washington attributes because we want to produce an industry ready graduate we want to produce job givers rather than job seekers. So, in each phase of our visions 
are addressed by varieties of the activity carried out by the student community, by the departments, by the section or management or university, so that we can come out with the graduates who are demanded by the industries, who are demanded by the societies, and let them contribute for their self-development, for the development of their family, for societal upliftment and their contributions towards the nation development at large and making our India, a developed India, a new India by 2022. The today's topic is a very modern topic so far as the pedagogy is concerned. Teaching learning is not new. We have ashrams and parsala even during the Sri Ram era, Sri Krishna era, and in Mahabharata, and also we have learned different types of the ashrams and parsala. The teachers, the gurus used to address his, their shishyas at that time. There is continuously progress in touching learning process, in touching learning philosophies. In the modern era, requires a very scientific process. So this uh, didactic is one of the scientific process. It is theory of learning on a wider spectrum. It is theory and technical application of teaching learning process. It refers to the science of teaching and learning. The didactic is a knowledge-oriented, distancing and theoretic process. It analyzes how teaching leads to learning. It draws various contributes of the science towards both SLN as well as the foreign language education. It is a practice-oriented and technical process of teaching learning and covers actors, curricula, content, content, and objective. So let we, in a very spiritual way, attend this symposium and enhance our teaching learning capabilities, how we can compete with the institutions of the global recognition by way of our delivery. Professor Kostein has very wide experience in this particular area. So let me attend his lecture so that we can understand how he share his information, how he can deliver his knowledge, and how he has demonstrated experience. So all this demonstration sharing and delivering will be of great relevance for the participants. So I thank you, Professor Navin Seth, Vice Chancellor Gupu, Honorable Chairman CVM, and Professor Constantine for sparing their valuable time to motivate Team BBM for this particular symposium. May God bless all of us for a better future. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir, for your warm welcome. BVM has 12 reputed international academic partners from various countries. Euron Federal Music formed in 1920 and was originally named after the first president of Russian Federation, B.M. Yeltsin. This academic partner of BVM since 2016, we organize different activities under international collaboration cell like promoting the exchange of faculties and students, joint supervision, curriculum development, joint research activities, and conference publication. This symposium is organized as a part of this partnership. It is my privilege that we have total 400 plus registration from 12 countries, which are Russia, Germany, Iraq, USA, Mexico, Brazil, UK, Uganda, Afghanistan, Canada, and India as well. We are happy to see this overwhelming response. Being associated, I thank all the participants for making faith in BBA. Because of this vast response, we have done the YouTube streaming of the. I really feel privileged to have the presence of Professor Dr. Navin Shape, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Gujarat Technological University, which is India's world class top university with 486 affiliated. <laughs> the university has about 4 lakh students enrolled in a large number of diploma, undergraduate, postgraduate programs, along with the robust doctoral program. I request respected Professor Darwin Shade, sir, to address the gathering with his precious words. Sir, please. Namaskar. 
very good morning respected chairman cvm shri biku bhai patel principal indrajit bhai kaushika ben today's speakers from the russia constant other faculties and all participants globally very first i congratulate the organizing committee and particularly the principal indrajit patel for organizing such international uh, symposium and the topic is selected is also very very important because the teaching methodology that is very important and now a day in this pandemic covid lot of changes every sector is significantly affected every sector either it is education either it is administration either it is a transportation uh, finance business every sector is affected so there may be a lot of changes the scenario may be changed after covid 19 so there may be a, a different suppose we all are meeting here uh, in this e platform by online mode so there may be a different changes there may be a lot of challenges so university having the different problems education having the different problems there may be a lot of different opportunity also and to convert these challenges into opportunity university has to play an important role suppose there may be a new and new business opportunity new and new industry will be come to india and accordingly we have to prepare our engineers from the educational institutes there may be not routinely found uh, such type of the syllabus and other thing so there may be a lot of changes are required but this word is didactics is very important because in our educational institutes what happen any creativity suppose any student has an idea any creativity but when he approaches the teacher the teacher says yes your idea is very good but you you do very first complete your exam then and then whichever you like you do you don't do uh, this thing means we are killing the creativity of the students at the educational institutes this is the real hard fact and teaching does not mean just to throw the information now our students are very very smart all informations are available by a single tip of finger we will get the information so information is not important now but the knowledge the lectures which delivered how it is applicable our engineers are fail today really it is a hard fact that they are not to solve the real life challenging problem the problems arise our engineers have the theoretical knowledge but the application part is lacking so teaching methodology is very very important so i think in such scenario when everything is in turbulent stage uh, there is uh, uncertainty but this seminar is very useful uh, to the all faculties and indirectly to the society to the nation so thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to express my views thank you thank you so much sir for your encouraging words for team bbm and at large for the society today we are blessed to have the august presence of engineer biku bai patel sir chairman of charudar vidya mandal board of governors for bbm engineering college as president of today's function he is a graduate of 1974 civil engineering batch from bbm engineering college He is actively involved in many charitable trust 
He is associated with Sardar Patel University as the Senate and Syndicate member. Apart from this, he has active involvement in different trusts and organizations across Gujarat and India. I request Engineer Bikubai Patel, sir, to give his presidential remarks. Good morning to all. Honorable Vice Chancellor of GTU, Dr. Navin Sheth, Principal BBM and team, Professor Kosta team, speaker from Ural Federal University and participants. It is my pleasure to be with all of you on occasion during introduction function of International Symposium organized joined by BBM and URFU, Russia. On a very important topic of advanced and teaching learning methodology to justify the criteria for international standards. BVM is always a step ahead to justify the challenges of progressive world by way of hosting and organizing different activities along with quality education. Charutar Vidya Mandal sins establishment plans and support all the activities for the holistic growth of students, faculties, institutions and society at large. We address all of domains of sustained development through education and outreach activities. CVA and its institution play a <coughs> pivotal role to fight against novel coronavirus and come out with this pandemic situation. I congratulate Team BVM and thanks Dr. Shet for this gracious presence on this occasion. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the blessings and your kind words. I'm lucky to share a word of thanks for today's event. I would like to thank Dr. Navin Shet, sir, VCGPU and Andrea Bikubai Patel sir, Chairman of CVM to accept our invitation to praise the function. I am very much thankful to our Principal Dr. Indrajit Patel sir, who is our constant source of motivation and inspiration. I am also thankful to Dr. Constantine, Rural Federal University, Russia for accepting our invitation to deliver the talk in this international symposium and also Professor Vimal and Professor Yana. I would like to thank both the conveners of the event, Dr. Tanmay Pawar sir and Dr. K. Rampert sir for all the supports. My special thanks to Professor Chintan Mahan, IEP coordinator BVM for being my, my continuous support. I am very, very much thankful to Mohit Bhai from GTU and our st students team, Himanshu, Jaimin and other team members to provide their keen support to organize the entire event. Thank you all who have directly or indirectly supported us. We have because Professor Constantine Oko Bikong, Ural Federal University, as today's expert. On behalf of BBM Engineers, I welcome you, sir. I now request Professor Vimal Harsha from Ural Federal University to introduce the expert and then we'll make the session open. So, a very good morning to the Honorable Vice Chancellor of GTU, uh, the Chairman of Charter Vidya Mandal, uh, to Honorable Principal of BVM, uh, to dear Professor Constantine and Kaushika Madam. Namaskar to everyone and a very good morning. On this occasion, I would like to say a few words about Ural Federal University. Ural Federal University, uh, and as we call it Urfu, is not only among the top ranked universities in Russia, but also constantly ranked among the top universities in the world. The recent QS survey of university ranked us at 331, which is almost 30 places higher than the previous rank that we held. Urfu is a very international university and we are on constantly on the lookout for new educational partnerships across the globe. India is one of the partners which are not, which is not only strategically important for us, but also it is a well-known fact that culturally India and Russia share a bond of mutual trust and respect. It will surprise many of the people here, but I would like to inform 
that Guruji Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, the Indian spiritual guru and leader, is an alumnus of Ural Federal University. Such are the strong roots that our university in particularly shares with India. In fact, it is noteworthy here to mention that in the past, uh, almost 200 students from Gujarat have visited Urfu as participants of the Summer University project. Likewise, our delegations have made multiple visits to GTU and BVM, which have strengthened the ties between us. Currently, we have partnered in multiple events and have drawn plans to build much stronger collaborations in the field of research as well as academic and student mobility. Now, I would like to give a brief introduction about Dr. Constantine, who is our distinguished speaker for the day. While I was a student at Kufu, Dr. Constantine, or Dr. K, as we would like to call him, was one of my professors and direct guru who taught me human resource management. He is one of the professors who has the most striking personality and an influential teaching style. He was always extremely interested in Indian culture and philosophy. And although he had never visited India, his knowledge about our country, culture and philosophy is impeccable. I am extremely glad and would like to thank him for accepting my offer to participate in this online symposium and hope that today all of us will get to learn something about didactics from him. I would also like to thank the management of BBM for actively organizing multiple events during this international pandemic, which is not only keeping us busy, but also stimulating our minds with interesting new ideas. Our partnership is getting stronger by the day as we work together to produce some terrific academic results, whether it is joint events, joint conferences, academic and student mobility, BIM and UFU are always together coming forward to do something new. Saying this, now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Constantine for his lecture and uh, hopefully we will learn something new. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you so much, all the dignitaries, for your precious presence. Now, I hand over this session to Professor Constantine for his expert talk. Thank you so much. Professor, are you still with us? Dr. K? Uh, surely I am here. I have been just uh, switching uh, the parts of the screen and uh, checking my presentation. Uh, I see, uh, it looks everything is working. Now, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Vimo, for your presenting me. After all, it's a great honor to address an Indian audience. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start running my presentation. Maybe this one. How can I use it both? Well, um, uh, dear friends, I was told that I have about 30 minutes with something for my monologue. And I have the habit to speak from my heart. I also comment uh, on my origins. I will try my best to to present my university and to leave uh, positive impressions. Uh, well, but I also, and later we will have about 10 to 15 minutes of Q's and A's time, questions and answers. So my theme, which was, uh, in fact, uh, elaborated during the negotiations with uh, my friend Vimal. Well, 
is about uh, the teaching skills, the teaching uh, in the situation of uh, lockdown, pandemics, or the so-called uh, limitations of uh, social contacting, which in fact puts us in the situation of uh, information era, whether we expected it or not. <laughs> And uh, thus, I have also several, I had, I made it, I thought about it several times. I had several drafts and now I am trying to use them uh, all. So, should be what did I say? I have several um, key ideas. Uh, my first idea is about antididactics, which might uh, sound weird, but it has uh, critical roots of its own, and it works. I also plan to touch the challenges of distant education, distant teaching, distant learning, the expectations and, uh, as you might say, mis-expectations uh, of this um, unfolding situation, which we all observe right now. And also, I want to address uh, the problem of the university status, maybe not in a formal or bureaucratic or administrative sense, but uh, as a cultural phenomenon. And of course, I see that uh, in our current uh, conversation, <coughs> the key player, the key frame for our dialogue, or we might audaciously call it polylog, is Indian civilization, Indian culture. Because it was a great, uh, uh, Surprise. That was a very pleasant surprise to me when uh, Vimal addressed me with the idea to participate in such an event. And I am gladly participating in it. And I have to tell you that uh, my first um, uh, offline expression, <laughs> or, or, or offline impression of India, uh, when I when I first, uh, it was the first time in my life when I saw a, a big group of uh, Indian students in the Ural Federal University. It was the summer school 2015. Uh, and I have to tell you that um, that impressed me a lot. But maybe I was a little bit prepared. Uh, being a project of a Department of Philosophy in the Ural State University, which was one of the elements to produce Ural Federal University in the 21st century. Mm, I recollect the autumn semester in 1980, when I was a student of philosophy, and uh, my biggest my biggest experience of that moment of my studentship was the lectures of on Asian philosophy read by Professor Zvirevich. That was a tiny, or oh, he is, in fact, a tiny man in spectacles. In fact, his speciality was uh, Latin texts, and he wrote several volumes on uh, Roman authors but he was a disciplined and organized uh, lecturer. And so he devoted uh, full time 
the whole semester to Asian philosophy, where Indian philosophy was maybe the brightest, the brightest diamond. Uh, I was also lucky to find some uh, books in Russian, uh, which were published uh, during the so-called uh, warm-up period in Soviet history in the early 60s, when uh, the leader of the Soviet Union was Nikita Khrushchev. That was also a period of uh, friendship uh, with uh, Indian Republic, with India. And uh, there, uh, well, uh, there were arranged several publishing houses that translated books into Russian. They were for general public and for specialists. And there were several textbooks of Indian philosophy, which impressed me. I remember at least three authors like Chitterja and Data and Chattopadhyaya and several. Well, and my invention was that um, uh, even uh, this, uh, I would say, uh, uh, primary, primary acquaintance uh, with the structure of Indian teachings gives you a very strong, uh, very strong uh, background for understanding any uh, system of philosophy in the world. So you can easily find a prototype for every philosophy, especially in the Western culture, if you know at least the basics of an Indian philosophy. And the key point was uh, uh, quite another type of relationships uh, with the myth, with the myth. Well, uh, let me quote uh, a German, uh, outstanding German mind, Goethe, who once observed that nature is a genius to produce an individuality. No one knows uh, who is uh, the spectator of this performance, but nature is also merciless to individuals. And as we know, this point, this axis of uh, differentiating between individuality and individuals, it produces the different semantics in Western and Eastern culture. And in many uh, aspects, I find that uh, the creative momentum is usually accumulated on the introvert side of that uh, of that performance. Uh, if we talk strictly about mythology, uh, that was a common sense mistake uh, throughout the scholar world. When people up to the 19th century, or maybe some people even later, thought that uh, the ideal or the most uh, the most pure mythology is uh, ancient Greek mythology. It was a great miscalculation. As we know, um, uh, Greek myths were uh, criticized and uh, poetically edited. But the same work was underway uh, in India. So the methods and the tools were quite different. If uh, Western thought produced uh, the idea of a uh, morally beautified hero, uh, or that was uh, some kind of a divine individuality or individualism. In India, we find uh, so-called didactic mythology. And that didactic mythology still stays in the heart of the tradition, as we understand the tradition. 
Even the name of uh, one period of late Vedanta philosophy, which is called Upanishads, uh, we see that uh, the literal sense is sitting beside, so not on distance, not talking over mountains or over oceans. But now modern technology can bring us together, even over these uh, physical distances. And tradition is nothing but traduir, uh, uh, that is a Latin word, which is to, to relay or to convey something in a physical presence. In a physical presence. And as we know, uh, the global civilization uh, was produced uh, from the attitude uh, elaborated as rational or rational empirical paradigm in Western culture. And now all these problems to compensate the relationship between people and their life worlds, between tools and environments, they could be again accumulated on the other side of this didactic mythology. And uh, also, I want to add my tapens uh, from the point of view of a Russian provincial university. Yes, we are advanced, but we are a very special region. Um, from the point of view of my ancestors who had arrived to this uh, region, the Euro, that was uh, not even called Russia, it was called uh, Stone Belt, as here are the hills and stones, very old mountain system, geological mountain system, and uh, it was a gate to Siberia, and Siberia was considered as uh, some remote, cold and wild territory. Uh, of course, <laughs> the best uh, or the strongest impression of our region is the purely unpredictable weather. Uh, if you like uh, this unpredictable creativity, you can arrive in, here uh, in any season of the year and you will enjoy the unpredictable. But uh, usually it is definitely cold in winter and sometimes very hot in summer, but the switches and the twists in terms of the scenarios are absolutely unpredictable. And uh, still we are, as you know, Russia is a vast territory, uh, maybe uh, it's a little bit behind after India, which is a notion of, of people. But we have a very differing uh, anthropological types and, uh, and maybe towns and ways of life. So that means that uh, we do not need to import some multiculturalism to understand the logics uh, of technologies. Uh, included in that category. Professor, can I interrupt you for a while? Yes, yes. Well, so, well. Yeah, sir, please share your screen. Uh, the screen is not uh, visible. So you yeah. cannot see my presentation? Yeah, yeah. Participants would like to see the presentation oh, screen. Yeah. I just switched it. Uh, well, wait a minute. Now, now I will. Now I will correct it. Yeah. Thank you. Wait a minute. It should be there. I forgot a very important step. <laughs> so let me show you. Oh, I have several. Uh, Several formats for you. Yeah, fine. Maybe sometimes the names are telling something. 
Thank you for <laughs> reminding me. Maybe <laughs> it's okay. Sir. Uh, So, my friends, true myths are archaic myths. In fact, uh, we cannot find a culture uh, without a myth, which lies uh, at the root of the culture. Uh, myths and uh, the older the myth, uh, the more similar the myths are. Uh, we share our um, human nature in this archaic myth. Uh, you cannot explain myth rationally, as it as it reflects the becoming of culture, and culture is no less than a way to survive, as we cannot survive without learning. Uh, we are not. Uh, specialized and not um, not um, finalized by logical speech still it keeps the problem of individuality as syncretism means that not only logics and aesthetics come together Crude and proof come together, but uh, a person, individual, is not uh, is not elucidated, is not uh, separated from the community. He is just uh, an organ of that community. Tradition is a mechanism hmm, that realizes. The potential of myth in new, in new situation, which is a challenge to primary culture, and which is um, a way to human history or numerous histories. Now we see that these numerous histories are coming together. Still, there is a very interesting point. As we know, uh, the way from numerous histories to a unified human race history was through uh, colonialism and through world wars and both are a tragic experience both are tragic experiences and uh, there is also a question put forward by um, another German mind, Immanuel Kant, who was asking, what is the moral uh, status of the human race? We can easily talk about moral status of a person, of an individual. We can also ask the morality of a community or a human group. We might even um, argue morally uh, the country policies, the state policies. What about humanity? And uh, Kant made a conclusion that the true point of morality is still uh, individual personality. Individual personality. As community usually uh, goes to some mediocre standards and uh, state policies could be selfish and international relations could be marked by uh, selfish behavior of bigger and smaller players in the theater of uh, global history. So, looking forward for uh, ethics and moral consciousness of the human race, where can we find the prototype? But we do not need to go backwards in every aspect, 
But still we have to know that some part of the tradition, which is uh, didactic mythology, is still with us. Uh, of course, it is, br it is brighter, it is uh, more vividly presented in Asian culture, but uh, being a part of a human community, you still understand there's working elements of a didactic mythology. Uh, still, it is the way uh, maybe kids are learning their native tongue. And as we know, Noam Chomsky is quite right, and he observed that uh, if we compare linguistic skills of native speaker with uh, one's experiences and sitting in a number of situations to learn the native tongue, they are quite incomparable. So we, we need to have some UG or pre-installed metrics for acquiring our mother tongue. And the most intimate parts of a human organism is the speech. And how we uh, get to understand each other, that is the true workings of um, didactic mythology in the form of a tradition. But traditions uh, might be obscure, they might be obsolete, and that's true again, but the element of uh, Archaism is usually motivated by two or maybe three moments. The first is uh, the uh, excessive formalizing. So that's a look for rationality converted to administrative bureaucracies. The second point is um, somewhat archaic romanticism. So people prefer to ignore the seeds of uh, reason, even in the archaic forms, which is the opposite of the first. And uh, the third is maybe uh, somewhat adaptive and superficial, but uh, widely spread nowadays, manner of uh, uh, going back from uh, literate, phase of learning to some uh, idiosyncratic phase of learning, like uh, people are talking uh, about visual objects, and video clips are remaining, are replaced in fed books, and I come from the generation grown on fed books, and that's a sign of paradise. Modern science is not an old phenomenon, at least not earlier than Shakespearean times, maybe 400 years, just with something. And we still have um, a very specific point in any methodology in every section of uh, human knowledge, which is the juxtaposition of qualitative and quantitative judgments to measure and to co comprehend whether mathematics should be the exact science or its opposite, and what is the problem of the foundations of mathematics. That is the point again. And here we have also uh, social consequences of this uh, mythological drift. As um, 
quantification is absolutely convenient for external administration and uh, bureaucracies. And when we talk about bureaucracy, we again uh, face the problem of authenticity. As we know, a classic uh, author on bureaucracy is German professor Max Weber. And Max Weber noted that uh, bureaucracy as an ideal type is a human machine. Again, we see the principle of rationality converted from the original task to, to save human souls, the salvation, converted into a technology of civil service. So it should be working. Why isn't it working? in many parts of the world and sometimes even in Germany but after all even if you follow the extremes of this ideal type you might face the problems with your environment and here we face um, the phenomenon of pragmatism uh, which is uh, thought to be exclusive, exclusively American, uh, American discovery. But as we know, uh, the uniqueness of America consists in its uh, mixture of numerous cultures. And uh, a lot of uh, American cultural products and products are imported from the old world as well as some traditional uh, items and uh, tools and products uh, are imported from America. Nothing to say about tomatoes and potatoes, <laughs> but tobacco, also consumption of tobacco. And again, Emmanuel Kant once noticed that uh, no matter how rational are our uh, cognitive tools, in the most important uh, situations of our life career, we rely on vague but pragmatically influential notions and images. Uh, let me quote uh, Kant again another German professor. But his humor is a little bit, uh, a little bit tragic, still it's working. In one of his late books, which is called An Anthropology from a Pragmatic Point of View, he noted, imagine that you are beside uh, a dying man. And this person asks you to bury him uh, in the dry soil or in the beautiful garden. So the question is, what is your human duty in this situation? Very stupid question. As we know that in all cultures, uh, everyone should try his best to fulfill his obligations uh, before a dying person or a dead person. But uh, look at the situation, let's look at the situation from a traditional rational point of view. We cannot judge uh, the rationality of his uh, of his pleas, uh, what is he talking about? We cannot evaluate whether the person is adequate, as no one had shared the experience of being dying amongst living persons, living people. And after all, 
uh, his two his two points uh, are a little bit uh, non-critical, uh, as if he is um, is uh, afraid to catch the cold, talking about dry soil, or whether he plans to enjoy the beautiful scenery in the beautiful garden. But still we have to follow this solution. Uh, let me add up some light examples. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, looking for our loved ones, uh, the situation of romantic, romantic uh, confession, uh, when usually young guy offers his heart and hand to a woman, is it really um, a rational choice for a lady, for a young lady? Hmm. Of course. Everybody knows that uh, there is some chemistry in that situation, and that chemistry is pragmatic. But when we uh, come to, to our times, we see that pragmatism lies uh, at the heart of modern social technologies, like physics, like rational physics from Archimedes, Aristotle, and Isaac Newton, and Albert Einstein. It lies at the heart of our uh, technologies. And technologies are nothing but uh, the optimal use of objects. Something which is useless from my point of view as an ordinary man could be converted into a really effective and precious resource from the point of view of an engineer. And the pragmatism is the basis for social engineering. And as the word human resources might uh, uh, might provoke different emotional reactions, I have read several books, uh, really good textbooks, on human resources, written by uh, authors with African roots, and uh, they are usually uh, explaining the ubiquitousness of this uh, initial term for the human could be a resource, and what we're talking about, maybe it gives some advantage for us to overcome uh, the shadow history of the slavery in human history. Anyway, looking at the situation from a brighter point of view, uh, from time to time, I ask myself, uh, what makes uh, people to become a successful football example? Just look at the guys. Uh, they are usually not so young. They cannot sometimes even run or kick the ball play. But they are organizing a team of uh, young athletes. And if it's a national team which is... Uh, which is competing for the highest positions. Uh, football coaches get really impressive salaries, not like professors, anyway. So, and uh, even the best uh, football players are not usually good football coaches. So the social technology social technical complexes. And here again we find two, two poles of the social technology, whether we should look at the team as a tool or whether we should look at the team as um, uh, some 
composition of individual tools and develop every tool in its proper direction and harmonize it in some kind of a unified practice. Surely when we talk about uh, university education, we find that uh, this intermediate tradition is the only good recipe to educate a new generation of, in the human race. Well, and rationality is the most naive point in formalism. As from a traditional mythological point of view, rationality was a, a way to salvation. After all, methodos in Greek means manner, way, or exactly road. Uh, like when you go somewhere. And uh, if you are looking for the most important point in your life trip, that is the salvation. And you also have to formulate a number of goals that will lead you to salvation. And tradition is alive on a charisma. Charisma, which is again a Greek word, which is some gift from above. You might be uh, not the best leader and still enjoy charisma or vice versa. And there are different, different situations. But again, no matter how strong is the leader, uh, the human human project or the situation of the human race survival uh, is impossible without the train uh, as a logical space in its highest sense. And here we find again uh, the rules, the norms. Humans are abstract and symbolic animals, and uh, humans invent rules where the instincts are missing or where the instincts are considered to be a risky tool to realize the behavior, and we are looking for social control. And again, here we find the class between rules and communication. As the late German uh, uh, philosopher and sociologist Jürgen Habermas noted, uh, if we take two um, breaches, of mechanic rationality. So if we rely on mechanic rationality only, we are doomed to be losers at the final point of our way, of our road to uh, global recognition and success. To be acknowledged globally means to come in peace with your environment and to come in peace uh, with the internal uh, variations and probable misunderstandings in human communities. So we have to delay from time to time our uh, external and formal rules. Uh, we need the space of communication. And that speaks directly to the hearts of <laughs> Russian and Italian anarchists as anarchism reflects a very simple point in human wisdom, which is trust people, not institutions. So, my friends, true myths are absent today, and myth makers 
are in fact notorious people of modernity or post-modernity. After all, um, we still have some maybe fine arts or some arts of performing, performing arts in human culture and civilization where myth could be working. That's a great potential. Uh, here in our meeting, uh, I've heard several times um, people naming out gurus. Well, but uh, I can confess that after all, in every culture, in every tradition, uh, people are reproducing uh, some phenomenon, some uh, semantics, some structural configuration or dynamical structural and dynamical configuration, which reminds of a guru. You cannot do it in music, in poetry, and even in sportive team. And that's looking for symbols. But uh, after all, when we look at this COVID situation, uh, I hope you've noticed that a lot of, uh, I would say, normal and intelligent people are asking from time to time, uh, somewhat questioning the status of this lockdown. They are putting the question, do you believe fully in the COVID-19? Well, this is not a, this is not a matter of trust, I would say. But uh, after all, it reflects the crisis of the social and communicative schemes to trust uh, the restrictions coming from above. And uh, that doesn't speak for the education level of the person. It speaks uh, on the temperature in the society. Uh, as we know, symbols might be different. And uh, if you are a smart person, you should be critical in every situation. And people are intuitively expecting only manipulators from every side, not only from uh, the passers-by, not only from neighbor, but especially from the people with a higher position in the society, as they were just uh, inventive to get to that position when they want to, to manipulate us. That is a critical symbolism or anti-symbolism, and I want to talk about today. So, if we talk about science as a teaching profession, and for Russia, this is an old story, as the university model, the prototype for Russian universities were classic German universities of the 18th and 19th centuries. And uh, this scheme stayed a little bit longer in our country due to the Soviet uh, administrative period. And uh, nowadays, when we are uh, rushing to catch up with endless exon or generally Western model, which is dominated by Anglo-Saxon terminology. Uh, we are still solving the problems. And I have to tell you that, for example, uh, Indian universities are, are more, uh, I would say, stylish. Uh, they have less um, external problems with adapting to these global sales, while in Russia it is still a problem, and uh, that uh, produces a clash between form and content. 
by the by the way I have to observe that uh, relying on the content and believing in tradition I still find the values of the highest uh, criteria in this synthesis to be the unifying tool into modern, modernizing uh, Russian university bureaucracy. People and institutions. Uh, the old story comes from induction. So, Kogita Ergosin. So, my existence could be proved only by my radical doubt, because to think means to doubt. And even later authors like Sir Karl Popper, they talk about falsification. They talk about uh, conjectures and refutations. They talk about critical rationality. But an induction is another story. It is a kind of psychology to be open to the environment and to bring our doubts or whatever we hear or talk about, as the words are numerous, to the light of the day. And I like the metaphor used by Francis Bacon, who observed that not only truth is a daughter to time, but still, when you are in a clash, in a dispute with the scholastics, uh, they will beat you in their own cave because it's dark there, and normal people adapted to the light of the day see almost nothing there. And the blind will have an advantage in fighting with the duck with a person who has some vision. So we have to take them out of their cave and bring them to the nature. So nature is also a part of God's speech to us. And that led to numerous, numerous seductions in ideas like Romanticism, and by the way, it produced anti Uh The second way, action system, lies at the heart of modern social science and modern uh, social technology. Whether we look at a society as a higher entity compared with every one of us, or whether we come to a principle that society is nothing but a sometimes unpredictable consequence of numerous actions uh, realized by numerous individuals, these are two points. Uh, when we talk about fundamental science, this contradiction, this contradiction is uh, not so so strong as you might use telescope, and you also might use microscope to analyze the space objects, for example. Uh, when we talk about, for example, biology or even the pandemics with coronavirus. You might talk about big data, about social statistics, but you also should talk about uh, tools of individual diagnosing and um, uh, looking for the remedies. And the last, the most intimate layer, lies in the thread between morality and law. Well, following the Kant uh, principle, uh, we should never find a solution in this last point. But in fact, we can look at it uh, at somewhat cynical approach used by this uh, action, action system integration. After all, every set of rules is incomplete due to three points. The first is the development of human activities, like the invention of new tools, 
new transactions. Uh, they are ma making our rules, our norms obsolete. The second point that uh, in every situation we have rules and norms of a different level, whether they are very spe special and individual, or whether they are general and even universal. And after all, my friends, the third, the most important point is that uh, we are always dependent on a subject applying the norms. That's a huge problem. Uh, we cannot uh, run from this micro vision, which could be easily presented as the only one. Because nobody and nowhere had seen not only God, but nobody and nowhere had seen the state. Of course, I might see a picture of some president. But uh, more convincible would be a meeting with some policemen or maybe um, some civil servant in the uniform or customer. <laughs> so that represents the state in its my microstructure. Form. And that leaves us with our uh, ability to comprehend. Uh, the idea was to produce new bigger regions, so-called federal regions, and uh, sometimes these administrative uh, borders, they look irrational. As I have to tell you that, for example, since I belong to the region, we have uh, several old Ural towns, uh, which are very similar, but for example, Perm region uh, was uh, attached to bigger Volga region, although it's a part of uh, this Euro. Uh, it is the border between uh, geographical Europe and geographical Asia, and uh, almost uh, all Western Siberia is now a part of this Euro federal region which made it one of the richest regions. As <laughs> you know, this situation with COVID has coincided with the situation in oil and the gas markets. But Western Siberia is one of the biggest uh, oil and gas producers in the world. And uh, when we talk about Ural Federal University, it was a collusion or confusion of two, two well-known global, well-known universities. One was the technical one, which was called UP. It was widely known. And the other was the classical university or Ural State University. It so happened that before the start of a Ural Federal University, in the last century, I had been a student of Euro State University. But later in my teaching career, I became a professor of Euro Technical University. And during the, this, uh, during this uh, unification, uh, this integration, I have observed several pluses and minuses. And uh, the first, maybe a little bit critical, but uh, somewhat disappointing, was that I saw more common sense in uh, technical structures. Uh, while heart and soul, I was a son of the classical university, and when these two structures were just uh, integrated, and uh, the duplicating systems were created and abolished and uh, created again. That was a little bit painful period. But as we know from the integrative schemes of bigger corporations or business corporations, 
Uh, this uh, integration usually is solved by bringing uh, a new administrative team. And uh, our rector arrived with his team. Of course, from my point of view, that was a multiplication of bureaucracies. And uh, switching to my common sense, I would say that uh, during the first couple of years, the great improvement was in uh, in improving the the continuary in the main building because uh, the problem to have a snack to have tea and something else that's a problem for professors and students still euro federal university is not uh, I would say a rigid structure. It's a dynamic structure still on the move. Thus, concluding this uh, methodological uh, overview, we see at least uh, three layers of the modern didactics and uh, still I have some appendices about uh, this distant education to this conclusion but this conclusion is about the categories I used in my previous monologue so we cannot uh, be confident without obtaining some ground similar to old school this old school, whenever it is, in every profession, in every, including the teaching profession, in every uh, sphere of research, it relies on its own myths, it has its own shortcomings, and you need uh, brighter personalities, brighter characters, to represent its critical potential. However, new bureaucracies are needed, and that's uh, not uh, an internal demand to develop university as, in the, as an education system. It comes from the challenge of uh, developing university as a huge and socially responsible corporation. And usually, from an external point of view, some individual projects are, I would say, fruits at the reach of, of few, few periods, short-term periods. But synthesis failure is something that is a challenge to the lack of strategy. And after all, in educationism, the synthesis failure is uh, reflected and is finalized by the intention for a unified control, while the classical educationist approach consists in developing polylogues and dialogues. And now we are having a dialogue. Uh, via modern techniques and technologies. So, I am just uh, finishing uh, as my time is running out. And I have to show you just a few pics, maybe for to, maybe to prepare, or to, to, pre to prepare myself to your question. So, now we are in the situation of a distant education, and as our administrators told us that the next academic year we will start in the regime of Zoom, Google Meet, and etc., and other distant platforms. And there were some uh, expectations from all sides of the process, from administrators, from teachers, 
And uh, here is my uh, root comparison, which mostly speaks from common sense. So pros and contrasts of distant ed education. Uh, my uh, my primary idea is that uh, you cannot change human nature. And you cannot start uh, your educationist career with a distant education, whether you are a student or a professor. So an offline experience is something primary. But it is good for autonomous adults when you are already educated in a conventional way, uh, you can get some extra opportunities. Uh, the second point, the second layer of pros and contrast looks even more through the after all. Uh, that distant education is not cheaper in reality as the managers expected. Firstly, we still need the infrastructure. We need uh, to staff all people with devices. Uh, the internet connectivity should be available. Uh, the uh, services, the platforms should be available. As, for example, in rural federal university, when you are working from your home computer, you can reach only for simplified versions of the corporate sites, uh, which is not helpful. And uh, but from the other point of view, it modernizes the teaching sphere, as I can. Uh, but in fact, it is looking for some mixture of both distant and traditional education. But what is pro and what is contra, it, it has shown that we need more professors in this situation of distant education. Of course, I can lead a conversation with uh, maybe up to 10 or maybe 12 or 15 students in every uh, computer platform. But what happens if you have, for example, a group of bachelor students consisting of 30 or 40 students? Um, my first uh, experience was that when I ordered them to make some task, which could be done easily between during a couple of hours in the room, in the classroom. Uh, next week, my uh, email was, uh, after all, killed by the overwhelming versions of, of, of my every student. But, so, in fact, it leads to uh, uh, some limitations in our time resources. As teachers uh, could work more effectively in some traditional way in the classroom. But I know that everybody faces it. But uh, as you know, if administrators come to a conclusion that more professors is uh, also a beneficiary for developing distant education, maybe it is a, it is a positive one. So, anti-didactics. As you know, uh, Europe had never known didactic mythology, which is a unique Indian cultural product, only slightly reflected in the Bollywood uh, pictures from time to time. But uh, Europe had um, a period of so-called didactic poetry, which was uh, somewhat uh, romantic uh, movement, cultural movement, uh, where individual love was reflecting some natural law of the universe, and people might arrive to conclusions. But uh, the strongest anti-didactic uh, or anti-dictation was a famous French writer and poet, 
and researcher Charles Perrault. Everybody knows his Red Cap tragedy. In fact, uh, this version is usually told to kids in an optimistical form. But uh, I have to um, confess that, it, in fact, it is a tragedy. As in the original, uh, Charles uh, concluded every of his tales. It was written against the Romanticism principle that you might teach love or something else, that sweet word might make our life sweeter. And uh, the poem in French ran like this. So, wolves, there are wolves. And the most dangerous of wolves are those. Uh, uh, Dr. Constantine, I have to interrupt you. I think we are running out of time. Uh, so, if we can open the floor for questions in some time, when you're ready. Yeah. I am ready. I am just, I just want to go to... Uh, to the interface. Yes. So I've switched off my uh, presentation. So no questions in the chat and Uh, well, 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 I see a question in chat. Thank you so much. What are the approaches to teaching that go beyond centered classroom? I believe that uh, the center of teaching uh, is um, open dialogue. And um, you might realize it in the classroom, but classroom is only a physical, physical tool to bring people together in a traditional way. So if you can realize that classroom by any other means, it should be working. So the approach is that um, we should not depend on the form of our conversation. But uh, we should be always open to the unpredictable mm, results. Now, that means that, uh, for example, negative, negative reply or negative result is also a result. And you can try to do something with it. Well, uh, my Mexican friend from Puebla, which is one of the biggest uh, private universities in modern Mexico, told me that um, they have experiences uh, for postdoc college, which is uh, the classroom for master students, for example. And they uh, invite several professors to the classroom. 
So can you imagine, for example, a sociologist, psychologist, lawyer, and uh, engineer realizing one and the same project and uh, realizing their lecture together in the classroom. We can do it, they can do it even in an easier way using platform like this, for example. So any distant platform can be built. Please, you can also ask questions uh, using your microphones, as it seems to be working. Thank you, Professor. Now we have uh, Professor Kiel Robert, who is convener of this event. He would be concluding the session. Great. So, thank you. Uh, I can switch off my... Mm -hmm. Respected Professor, Constantine, sir, Thank you for your time. from Ural Federal University. I'm Dr. K. U. Brambat, Head of Information Technology Department at Billa Vishwakarma Mahavid Jalaya. Sir, we are indeed thankful to you for sparing your valuable time for us in this pandemic situation. And the topics covered by you on theory and application of teaching, it will be definitely helpful to teaching fraternity in upcoming time period definitely will apply and follow the pathway suggested by you in upcoming time period so we can enhance our teaching learning skills and we can produce globally employable engineer that is the vision statement of our college Billa Vishwakarma Mahavidyalaya. Once again on the behalf of Charudra Vidya Mandal and BVM Engineering College and IEP cell of BVM Engineering College we are really thankful to you and Vimal sir and entire team of BVM and the Ural Federal University for taking the pain for making this event successful. Once again, thank you. Namaste. Thank you. We can conclude the meeting over here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank doctor. You. I thank believe you. I, I better prepare a formatted text expressing my hilarious ideas and send it to you. Maybe it will be a continuation of our exchange and dialogue in the written form. Yes, so definitely we will try for that. See you in the near future for the other events and activities. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining in.